Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. As I always say, Dumela, Saubona, Sapase, Namaste, Oshin, Dubra Otra, Assalamu alaikum. How tap even? Okay. Bonsoir. Good evening. Welcome, everyone, to the digital couch. And this is the lot carry wise digital couch we thank you so much for joining us tonight this is episode two we're so excited that we're building and growing our uh, our membership our watch uh, the people who we are touching both here and abroad locally nationally and internationally and on the digital couch you know what you need to bring please make sure you have first of all your tea because we're sitting on the couch also, make sure that you have a great pen and whether it be some post-its or a journal because you are going to be taking notes. Welcome to the Digital Couch. If you are seeing us on whichever platform, you have a couple of seconds to invite somebody because you not only have the invitation, but you can invite other people who also should hear this amazing session tonight. First, let me give some shout outs and we'll call them shout outs to the following people to Reverend Emmett Dunn, who is the executive secretary treasurer of Lot Carey, to President Gregory Jackson, the first vice president, Dr. Gina Stewart, second vice president, Dr. Jesse Williams, and for Lot Carey Wise, which is the women in service everywhere, first vice president, Angelita Clifton, and second vice president, Dr. Brenda mm -hmm. McBurrow. We thank you so much once again for being here joining us and thank you especially to the people who have just joined our group today so amazingly we had a crowd campaign if you if you will uh our, during our first episode and we were able to amass uh probably about maybe 150 people 175 people within about five hours and so wow. we tried to top it tonight uh, we did get a couple not as much but we will continue to grow so the digital couch. What is the digital couch all about? Why are we here? Pre-Rona, that's the way I say it, <laughs> we would have had the opportunity to go hop on a plane, a train, automobile, bus, bike, walk to some other part of our country here in the United States in order to meet with our mission partners who are here in the States, in the Caribbean, and on the other side of the world. But Rona had other plans. And so the digital divide has become very, very small because we just push the live button in order to get more people in our face through the digital space. Tonight is no different. We are going to have another amazing person on our digital couch. So please sit back, have fun ask questions. We actually already have questions or comments in our wow. comments. Section. Please do that. And we're going to be joined on the couch with none other than Reverend Dion Boissier. I said it right, right? You did. I you absolutely it. did. You I absolutely did. <laughs> So uh, please make sure that you type any questions again in the comments. And even if you are catching this on the replay, hashtag replay, share it with someone else because this is on the multiple platforms, not just the private group. And you can share the information um, with your friends and family. So we are, thank you very much for sharing and sharing is caring. So if you do share, put hashtag shared. If you're catching the replay, put hashtag replay. My name is Doriel Anes Larrier of Larry's Education and Resource Network, where I plant seeds to help you grow. And I'm also the social media, I guess, support for a lot carry women in service everywhere. Proud to have been raised in a black church, proud to have been raised as a missionary. And here it is. I am just trying to make sure that people who don't know get to know people that they should know. And Reverend Boissier is one of those people. Welcome Reverend Dion Boissier to our couch. So much for being able to be here. I'm so grateful. 
so grateful, and um, it's a it's it is a, a joy and a pre pleasure to be um, to be in this holy sacred space. Uh, we call that the, the way that um, all of our digital spaces have become now sacred spaces, really, um, as we've been able to join in those places. So the buildings no longer are are, are where we're gathering just because of, as you said, Rona, but um, the people are everywhere, and so I'm just so grateful. So and you and so I want to say that one of the things because we Baptists here and one of the things that you have already done is with, what what we will say is protocol has been established. So I am so grateful, <laughs> so <laughs> grateful that you have established it because I was going to go down the list of all of the people, um, starting from Dr. Jackson, Dr. Stewart, Dr. Clifton, the whole. And so I'm just grateful for all of them um, uh, because that is my connection to Lot Carrie and now to you. So thank Wonderful. you for having me. Uh, so I'm going to hop back a few days ago to which uh, broke down the walls even further. We're going to go there for about 10 seconds. I when I was uh, when I was asked to do this interview uh, with an Reverend Boissier, I said, well, I don't know her from a can of paint. <laughs> so let me do my homework. And as I did my homework, one thing st stood out in her little profile and it said, Midwood. And for those of you who are from New York or from Brooklyn specifically, shout out to Brooklyn. Um, I said, well, you know, Midwood is not only a small neighborhood, but it's also the name of a high school. And I said, how many other Midwoods could there be? So we did some chit chatting, found out not only is she from the same community at some point, but then we also shared another uh, residential space and another uh, another state that I went to college in. And then we have a shared friend, didn't yeah. even know. So know. we went from, good afternoon, Reverend Boissier. This is Doria Larrier. After about a minute and a half, we just said, how you doing? Sis. That's how we are, <laughs> yes. That's how we are now. So, <laughs> so if you see me I like flex back and forth, it's because we have that connection right now. But I also want her to have that connection with you and you with so we're going to start out uh, with a little history, a little uh, track record. And first off, today is an extremely, extremely special day. It is not only special because it is, some people in the tax world say it's the day. Mm -mm. In this world, it is Thursdays in Black. All right. That's right. How many of you have on your Black? Tell the truth. Drop it in the chat. Deep. Hashtag Thursdays in Black. Right. So let me give you a little bit of social media like data information. When you hashtag something, you bring digital voice to the term. So if anybody says hashtag Thursdays in Black, if anybody in the world, we're trying to make a global impact here, anybody in the world that happens to type that or hashtag that, you'll see the number, whether it be Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, it doesn't matter, and TikTok, uh, it will register. We want more people to know about these terms. So if you take your photo and you post it on social media, type in hashtag, you know, Thursdays in Black. If you're going to make a reference to Lot Carey, hashtag Lot Carey. If you want to make a reference to whatever it is that you want other people to know about that you also follow and are dedicated to, put a hashtag on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, uh, you it's fine too when you're looking right. for, yeah. When you want to look up information, if whatever you want to do, so add a hashtag to it. So, uh, so Reverend Boissier is in black. I'm in black. Tell me your connection to Thursdays in black because I didn't know that you had such history. Yeah. To the yeah. movement. Absolutely. So um, one of the things uh, uh, about Thursdays in Black, it, it is it's such it's a such a simple thing, but it's such a powerful movement. Uh, um, and it, of course, it has its origins uh, with the World Council of Churches. So um, first, let me say that um, I, I'm, I am the chair of Ecumenical Women at the United Nations, which we, we can talk about a little bit later. It's just, it is an international coalition of churches and denomina church denominations and um, ecumenical organizations that have status, e e uh, economic and social council status at the, U at the UN. Uh, but more than that, we're a, co a coalition um, uh, that seeks 
to uh, to speak the truth to power through partnerships um, in our communities, bringing women um, from around the world to the UN and our co coalition advocates for gender justice um, at the UN. And, um, and, and of course, through trainings and uh, uh, bringing our constituencies and delegations, network building from um, a global perspective around the world and mostly um, advocating not only for a few improvements, but we're advocating for fundamental systemic change, not mm. only in the church, but um, uh, 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 church and state, but also um, to invest and empower women worldwide. So ecumenical women is a part of, um, uh, because of the denominations, a part of the World Council of Churches. World Council of Churches is one of the member coalition partners in ecumenical women because they're all considered denominations. So we're all working together, right? Um, with our status at the UN. And as chair, one of the things that we wanted to do was relaunch the Thursdays in Black program um, um, initiative. And so one of the things that we're trying to do is amplify the voices. And so the Thursdays in Black campaign is literally just a global movement for a world without rape and violence. Literally, that is what it is, right? So and we're trying to simple. mobilize the world. It's very simple, but it's, it's a powerful thing. thing. Yeah, and so every Thursday we wear black and we wear it as an act of resistance and um, as, and, and to join in solidarity with the global uh, community to call for the end of rape and all forms of gender-based violence. And so this is something um, I know that because we're talking about a global uh, a, a, a global movement, right? There are some traditions and cultures that are really offended by wearing black because in their either in in their culture cultural tradition, uh, black, or even as we know, uh, the racial connotations have been always negative, right? With, with um, wearing black. But in this campaign, black is used as a color of resistance and resilience. It is a color that we are owning and, um, and we are walking in resistance to the systems that are trying to kill us. Right. So the the Thursdays in Black, it really grew out of the World Council of Churches. As I said, there was a decade of the churches in solidarity with women way back in um, 1988, I believe it was. And um, so the stories of rape uh, as used as weapons of war, women's bodies, um, gender injustice, violence and all those stories have come up within that decade. And then um, it was inspired because of grassroots organizi organizing women much like the missions, missionaries, and the women of Lock Harry. Women who are uh, organized around mission and the women really who are grassroots organizers, um, uh, World Council of Churches were, was inspired the Thursdays in Black by them. And these were the mothers of the diaspora in um, Buenos Aires in Argentina. So what they used to do is they would protest in the Plaza, Plaza de Mayo, right. against the disappearance of their children during the you know, dictatorship. There was the women in black in Israel and Palestine uh, protesting against violence against women, women in Rwanda and Bosnia, black um, sash movement in South Africa. All of these grassroots movements inspired the World Council of Churches to take this to the decade of churches in solidarity with women. And so from there, it had emerged and now we are all partners and advocates and uh, global advocates of this. And so what we are doing as um, ecumenical women and wanting, of course, hopefully to be able to partner with WISE and any and all of our partners, right? Because we know that um, according, it's, I think the World Health Organization stats now, 30% of, of women experience intimate partner violence in their lifetime. And the numbers have, I mean, gone astronomically high during COVID because of the um, the lockdown restrictions. So we know that these numbers are, are are rising. And so we just have a simple campaign, Ecumenical Women, as we're echoing this um, um, uh, this campaign with the World Council of Churches. And what we have done is we've asked them asked people to pause, to pray, to post, and to pledge. Um, I'm preaching, so you know I, I, I have the alliteration. <laughs> Say that again. I need somebody to take notes for me. Usually I'm the person that I'm the scope scribe. I need somebody to scope scribe for me today. Post, yes. wait, pause. No, we pause first. We pause for a moment of silence at 12 noon, your local time, wherever you are in the world to remember and honor those who have died at the hands of sexualized or gender-based violence, right? So we pause in first and then we pray. And we, we, we have a simple prayer that we're inviting everyone to do to pray mm -hmm. with us to say we stand with invisible victims 
of sexual and gender-based violence, we see you, you are not forgotten. Amen. So we see you, you are not forgotten, right? And then we post, that's pause, pause, pray, and post. post. Okay. We just talked about it. Put your pictures up, prayers of inspiration on social media, and we use the hashtag Thursdays in Black. Right. And thank you for those people who have already hashtagged Thursdays in Black. Yes. L- listen, Wise is this Wise is on it every Thursday. Wise is on it. They have their post, yes, and they wear their black. Dr. Clifton is on it. And they, I mean, literally, and we, we see all of the women, and it's such a gift because we know that women all around the world are, are are changing the game. And then the last thing we ask is to pledge. And this is something that people don't take this next step, and this is what we want. Um, so we're asking uh, to pledge with the global community to work to end the, um, the violence in our lifetime, right? So there is a pay on, on our website, um, ecumenicalwomen.org. Ecumenicalwomen.org. Um, I'm sorry, ecumenicalwomenun.org. Because it's Someone un- write that in. Ecumenicalwomen. Okay. So ecumenicalwomenun.org. Okay. Got right? it. And then there's and there's a Thursdays in Black page. You right. go to that page and then you make the pledge. Literally, that's you know saying your name, your organization, and it shows you what you're pledging, which is essentially to be an advocate to end gender-based mm-hmm. violence, right? So it's very simple. What we're hoping to get is to get a thousand names, a thousand names by um, uh, by, um, by by this November, because here's what we're wanting to do in November. And this is what we, I mean, it shouldn't be any, I mean, I'm saying That's November, not but it's not difficult, right? We are now, um, if, if you can imagine, we are now at, uh, I think it's only 300 or something, like, no, we're at 196 names. One of, since we lost, we, we launched in, um, we relaunched in um, September of last year and we're only at a, um, 196. So I'm saying we need a thousand names by November. And so, so this is what we and because in November, yes, thank you for helping me out. Because in November, what we're wanting to do is we're going to do a virtual march to end gender-based violence. And I'm telling you, um, so Ecumenical Women is going to be in touch with WISE and all the organizations to help us, uh, right? So we can start mobilizing right now, taking your pictures, joining them. And um, and what I can do is I'll share with you on your page. We have two v- videos um, that we've already put together. It's been powerful. And so we're we're... We're on the way. So that's what Thursdays in Black is about. You're, you are uh, joining a global movement to end all forms of gender-based violence in our lifetime. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So that shows us your connection to why we stand in Black. Ashe. Mm-hmm. On okay with the Ashe. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Another conversation. We'll, we'll get back to that. <laughs> yes. As a matter of fact, this is a tea sipping moment. If you have your tea... She's parched, but I'm parched just listening to her. All right. So that was why we're wearing black, why we wear black. Tell me about your chaplaincy Mm. of the Church Center for the UN. So when I heard that, when I read that, honestly, I felt like the grandmothers of, let's say, 20, 30 years ago, when their grandbabies, or let's say 30, 40 years ago, when their grandbabies went to college for the first time, and they're yeah. like, sweetheart, let me just put $5 in your hand. Wrap, it. It in, wrap it in the tissue. Those, those $5, yes. Those, that, those, she at the UN? Those church mothers, they are the ones that I'm carrying with me. I yes. drive by in New York City and I just look at the UN like, ooh, I wonder, could I ever like walk in there and you there? What are you doing? What are you doing? It is so I will tell you, it's um it's it, it really is uh it blows my mind too to know that you're sort of you're there. So the the church center for the United Nations is um it physically is located directly across the street from the from the UN. Right. Okay. And so it is um, we it, the United Nations is international territory. That's the other right. thing that people don't right. remember. Don't That's get. the only thing that so, I know. <laughs> yes, it's, it's international territory. So literally you cross the street and you're in New York City. You go across you go across to the U.N. and you are now on international soil. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, 
But so the UN, the Church Center for the United Nations um, is, is, uh, is there and it serves, it's owned by United Methodist Women and it exists to, you know, to expand the sort of the ecumenical uh, communities uh, capacity to access the UN, right? So this, the notion that we have the faith communities, the multi-faith communities, because the um, CCUN is um, our chapel, Tillman Chapel there is both ecumenical and interfaith. So it is there to um, to bring a greater voice to the broad and, um, and moral ethical concerns of the church to international affairs, um, the work of peacemaking and advocacy. So, so my role is spiritual steward of that space. So, I mean, so, I mean, in, the, in addition to the sort of the regular things that a church does where we, you know, the weddings and the, the funerals and the memorial services, mostly my, um, because my community is the world community. And my community is the UN, um, is, is, is our NGO community within the CCUN um, um, and as well as the, the, the UN, the UN community at large. So right. I have people that come from uh, from across the street um, for um, for prayers during the day. We hold services once a week. Um, um, I don't hold Sunday services because people have their own faith communities that they go to. Um, but on during the week, we have our weekly worship service on Thursdays. Um, so wait, and, can I ask a question about that? Yeah. So you just said that people have, again, their own faith communities. At your midweek service, it's ecumenical. It is ecumenical. That midweek service is ecumenical, and we um and then we have an interfaith services. So those are separate. So the interfaith, the ecumenical services that we have uh, every Thursday, that's usually for the uh, the um the Christian community, right? So when 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 we refer to the ecumenical community, that is usually the Christian various oh. denominations, the Christian community that comes. Because remember, you, United Methodist Women have found it in um, the building. And so um, if you if you go, uh, once, and I hope you're able to come, when this is all over, you all have to come for them. Yes. So in the chapel, you'll see that we have the flags from the various parts, uh, from, from the various faith communities, right? Um, so the cross, the, the crescent moon, you know, um, the star of David, you know, the Buddhist life wheel, those things, are all of there are cross. So so, uh, um, so our Thursdays services are, are the Christian services, and then we have interfaith services um, around issues that come up at the UN. So we have interfaith services around ending um, um, ending global, uh, the, you know, uh, ending. The, um, you name any of it, right? Because um, um, one of the things that what one of the things that I think that also wise can get involved with it, or any or, of the organizations can get involved with it, is the seventeen sustainable development goals. And so we have, and and that's everything from gender based uh, from yeah, the seventeen sustainable development goals. We call them for short the SDGs, right? And so for, so they're from from everything from ending poverty. To um, to partnerships, and in between is climate justice. There's gender equality. There's you know. So you, we have literally seventeen. And so what we uh, what I have done as chaplain also is part of that is um, uh, not only providing a sacred space, a worship, hospitality, community advocacy, and a forum for partners in civil society, right, to engage in this transformative education. Uh, but we we're, 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 what we're hoping to do uh, in my work engaging. Um, the local and the global. And so I mobilize what we have now. Um, I, I, some of you may know um, uh, Bishop Barbara Austin Lucas um, and Agape. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Agape comes and Agape uh, and Womb, a women organizing, mobilizing and building. They um, they have come now for the last five years. And um, it was just the women at first. And then what they've done, because one of the women uh, in Womb would come, they come for their women in leadership. Um, uh, lecture series every March, right after um, Commission on Status of Women. And so what they've done is they bring uh, bring the women and what the, one of the women are teachers. Um, and so what they did was they engaged their students. And uh, um, when I taught, I taught the women about the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. They went back, taught their students about it. And what they did was they brung them. So what we do every March is we bring in another group 
right? And so their women's um, lecture series uh, happens. And so, so this is the that this is for me part of my sort of personal mission um, oh, as chaplain. Yeah, so yeah. because oh, we have to be able to bridge the local and the global. Um, and and mm-hmm. I know right now, especially during. COVID, people are really concerned about what's happening in their local communities. And we should be. What's happening within your churches, what's happening. But I want to tell you that what 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 is happening around the corner is happening around the globe. And if we can, if we can get that into our heads, if we can really understand, you know, what that what that is, if we can understand it, the same thing when we're talking about traffic talking about human human trafficking we're talking about sex slavery and all of those things we got to know that in the bronx that's the hub for right here in new york city i'm just I, you know I'm, I'm making it plain because we bring think it home, bring it home. Mm-hmm. just happening around the world but they're not there's a there are uh, uh, abductions that are happening every day here there uh, you know so if we can bring in those global concerns and help help us to sort of relay them to what's happening in your local church what's happening in um your communities and particularly um it's it, it should be something and this is why i think when when dr jackson reached out to me it was such a gift and a blessing because again the um wanting this is what lock carry does right so that this is it's all about missions it's all about being able to assist come alongside those people who are right. doing the work to uh, work. Reach out to the left the last the least and the left out the ones that are on the margins and that is the work that that i'm trying to do so in this role that is that is sort of my job to be able to one um steward to be a good steward of the space um and open it up uh, for those who are, are are coming, again, hence the hospitality and um, the community advocacy, but also then to make sure that people are empowered. And and our theme of the building is um, empowered to build the things that make for peace. And so, if there, if 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 women and children and youth are being um, treated and their human rights are being acknowledged, then we right. have peace. Right. If we have sustainable development in those countries and communities, if we are able to help people, not just give them charity, what my part of my job is to help people think outside, uh, not just models of charity, I mean, but but to, to go to models of justice. And that's part of you know what I hope to bring um, to to Lot Carry and to talk about that. I think I need another sip of tea. Wait a minute. This is, okay, so let me just say that um, thank you very much to all those people. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Clifton, for uh, being my scope scribe today. I really appreciate it. So we need more people, of course, even though there's a couple of people who are watching right now to continue sharing this, to hashtag. This, now there's a whole lot to hashtag, right? This is, we have the least, the, the, the last, the least, the left out. We have pause, pray, post, and pledge because there's the new hashtags. Every single time you hear something that sort of connects with your spirit, here's a simple tip. Make it a hashtag. Wow. Just Mm. make it a hashtag because if you know it and you repeat it, you want other people to know it and repeat it. Mm -hmm. And in this digital space, it becomes a hashtag. So that's what you do for the UN. Oh. So now you've talked about connecting across the world, things that really are happening right here. And I'm in Brooklyn, shout out to Brooklyn. And you Mm -hmm. are Brooklynite. Let's just recognize that. Shout out to you. Of course, of course. Thank you. Right. So let's talk about the things that happen here in Brooklyn and the Bronx also happen in Bangladesh and Botswana. See how I did that? That's right. Bring it home to Chai Bok. Tell us wow. what happened yesterday, what day of, let's just say, not celebration, but of memorializing, yeah. of yeah. commemorating, of acknowledging, of highlighting what happened on yesterday, seven years ago. Sure, sure. So on April 14th, in 2014, 206, 276 um, girls were abducted mm-hmm. um, from their school. It was a government secondary school in Chibok, um, Borno, uh, Borno State. By They were abducted by Boko Haram, 
This is in Chibak, Nigeria. And so hence the hashtag started of uh, a hashtag Chibak girls, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so what we need to know is that 57 of them escaped. And this is important to, to kind of get, put your mind around this, right? So 57 of these girls, 276 of them were abducted. Um, uh, 57 of them escaped. Four of them were found miraculously. 103 of them, all, all, uh, years later, were released, but there's still 112 that are missing. And so yesterday um, uh, marked seven years. That's seven years, just way too long right. for uh, um, our girls to be missing. And so there is a bring back our girls that became the hashtag. Then, right. um, and um, even uh, with then first lady, uh, Michelle Obama used to mm -hmm. hashtag and everybody, you know, um, and when we were out there in 2014, um, we had, um, you know, uh, Alicia Keys was with us. We, had, I mean, we had everybody there. And so what we did was we, we would go to the Nigerian consulate, the embassy, which is literally on the corner of the block where church, the church center is, literally right. on that same corner. And what we would do is we would protest, right? So, but, 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 but the Bring Back Our Girls, we would bring back our girls New York. So there's Bring Back Our Girls Abuja, Chibak, um, uh, New York, Lagos, um, and then there's, so the, the global coalition, right? And so with um, Lagos, uh, ha, you know, each one had commemorative events where you have some of the parents that are there. Uh, we need to know 20 mm -hmm. of 20 of the parents have died because uh, suffering, uh, waiting for their children to come back and that, that, that they have suffered um, their physical ailments that have, have come from the grieving of not knowing what was happening. We have mm -hmm. um, what we do know. And so yesterday what we did was we organized um, uh, because uh, I have held space. The, the church center has been the place where Bring Back Our Girls New York has been gathering. Mm -hmm. And what we would do is what we would gather there. We would commemorate there. We would, you know, um, but these girls um, have been, uh, they've been raped, they've been abused, they've been trafficked, they've been forced into marriage, they um, coerced against their will, they've been forcibly impregnated because Boko Haram wants to continue um, building an army. And so what they've done is, again, women and girls have been used as weapons of war. Right. And so so this is what's been happening there, right? So the 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 the, Oftentimes, you know, um, uh, there we've been silenced. The trauma and people suffer. Women and girls suffer in silence over there. But that we can't hear their voices. They're somewhere in the Sambusa forest with Boko Haram, and we just don't know. So, marking that day was significant. And what we we don't just talk about it, but what we have done is each year. We um, bring demands to the governments. One day, one time, I mean, we stood there and um, I mean, we got, when I, they, they treated us awful, um, you know, because the press was there with us and whatnot and we're there. Um, but we did get a chance to speak to some of the officials there and, and to, to, to bring our letter to them. So what we did was we put together our press release and um, we submitted our demands again to echo what is going on. This is one of the things that we need to understand about the work of missions. And when we do global advocacy, we do not do this work just because of what you think is best to happen in an, in an area. We come alongside the people that are in that local community. So we find out what, are the, what the needs are there, right? This is the work of activism and right. the work of advocacy. You know, you find the needs out. Okay. Don't forget allyship. Absolutely. Now I'm gonna tell you something. I, I'm, I want I'm, I'm, I'm not only the allies, but I need accomplices now. I'm, I'm, I'm moving beyond allies. And we need accomplices at this I point. More stuff to write down now. Wait a minute. You know why? Because I need somebody to have skin in the game. An ally can you can decide one day or right. not. I'm just gonna you know this is, this is not working for me. On. You can put the shirt on. You can take the shirt off. Exactly. But when you're an accomplice, you have skin in the game. 
right with us so we do we need the allies too because all are going to help us to get what I, but i am interested in this moment to be able to have those who are going to be accomplices with us and i know we've we've always heard the accomplice in a negative connotation but this is what we're talking about when we talk about global advocacy we need both right um the allies the accomplices that that are going to have it so 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 we provided a report on the status of what's happening there and what we did was we put a list of demands together for what we're asking for um for um the president and for the for um uh, for, for the government to be able to do um so we we need we need accountability and what the the local community in chewbacca is saying they want is disclosure and closure the mm -hmm. parents need closure and they need to disclose what is happening and why is it that you cannot tell us where 112 girls are and you absolutely know. There's no, there's, you know, there's, there's no way that you don't know, right? So, you know, it's just, it's just, it's so sad. But the psychosocial uh, needs that are uh, that are that that our girls are needing, some of the ones who have have come out and actually right. are going into school now. So we do still need people who, uh, um, uh, doctors. Um, psychologists, psychologists you know, all this, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we need those, right? And so, so this is the Bring Back Our Girls global um, launch, and so there's going to be a lot more that's happening, um, but we we can't we cannot be deterred, and and so the the new hashtag, right, that um, has come up this time, along with Bring Back Our Girls, is okay. until all are free. Hashtag until all are free okay pause right there mm -hmm. however many people are watching us right now whatever platform you're watching this on i need you to hashtag that i needed to roll through these comments say it one more time reverend dion in addition to the bring back our girls hashtag bring back our girls this hashtag this year in particular is Hashtag until all are free. Because what we need, not only the Nigerian government um, to know is that, but we need, we need the world to know that we will not stop. We will not stop until all are free. Not just all of our girls in Chibak, but to all of our girls who have been subjected to this kind of violence until they are all free, we will not stop. So that's what Bring Back Our Girls uh, is about. And um, that's who we have been as this coalition. And Bring Back Our Girls New York is, is an interfaith coalition. Women of, 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 of all faith traditions have come together yesterday. Right. And it's on, our, um, it's on the church center um, page if anybody wants to see the commemoration where we did have um, uh, three witnesses from um, parents they gave their own account. It was heart wrenching to hear them talk about their children, mm -hmm. um, women, the mothers, and the fathers who are talking about their children and wanting. And then what they want them to know is because we know that many of them have been forcibly impregnated, right? Because again, Boko Haram wants to to expand their army, um, and and what they are trying to tell the government is that they they don't need to send them back because they are now their property. That's a whole nother conversation. So, but what the, the parents and the community in Chibak is saying is bring them back to us because even the children, we will we will keep the children. They are right. part of us. They are right. us. Yeah. And and we need to be able to we and these are the kinds of things that we learn from, right? Because we don't do um we what, what I, this is this is something that um I, I had um many times considered doing. PhD work and and um, and thinking about doing that and what I I find is uh, around trauma particularly now if I had to do it again it would be in that area but but in particular what we do is we uh, in the work of missions as well in this in the work of advocacy and activism allyship and accomplices what we do well as we try to prepare that the person who is traumatized and we do all of the work around the people who are traumatized but what we don't do a good job in is preparing the community to receive them again pause right there pause right there yeah those people who are just popping on and i know there are new people who are just popping on 
We are on the Lot Carry Wise Digital Couch with Reverend Boissier, who is the chaplain of the Church Center for the UN. She is also in this situation an activist and an advocate as well as an accomplice because she has skin in the game for the, the for the Chibok girls. So again, I, I have a couple of hashtags. I would love for people to to reply. If you see them in the comments, just as I tell my students, just copy and paste. Copy yep. if you can't tap copy and paste. Copy and paste, but wherever you are, wherever you are, and whatever platforms that you are on, because some people are, you know, social media gurus. So they're on Twitter, they're on Facebook, they're on Instagram. If you're on TikTok, God bless you, but I'm not there yet. But put these hashtags there as well. It could actually be a part of if you want to roll like that. Looking over my glasses, make that as like a part of your signature. Because if you if you can sit on the couch with us and chit chat about that, put skin in the game and make That's it right. as a part of your identity. Because hey, I can wear black. I can wear black because guess what? I like to cook and I don't like stuff to spill on my clothes and then I ruin my clothes. So I can wear black, right? That's almost like being an ally. Hold on, hold on, wait a minute. I'm I gotta lean in for this one. I could wear black because uh, let's say I'm an artist and even though Broadway is shut down, sorry people on Broadway, but you know, you can't see me at night because it's dark mm -hmm. there. So mm -hmm. I can blend into the background. We don't want mm -hmm. you to blend into the background. Right. We want you to stand in, lean in, move yeah. forward and wear black for the purpose of Thursdays in black. Right. We want you Ending to gender-based violence. Yes. Ending right. rape, gender-based violence in our right. lifetime. We can do it. Right. So, but I'm trying to differentiate between. Absolutely. Yes. Right. This it's intentional. It's intentional showing up and showing out for things that matter. So I could blend into the background like no one sees me or I can make some of this information as a part of what of who I am. And so I love being a missionary. I love doing what I can for those people who need a little bit more or a little bit different. And so right. I show up like that. So you show up like that. You show up wearing not just the badge on the outside, but the badge on the inside, right? Yeah. You show up carrying the cross, bearing bearing the burdens in the heat of the day. Because this is, That's it's hot. It. It's hot. It is. So mm -hmm. I just say, and thank you for those who are dropping um, information about uh, the trauma-informed community development is essential. Yes. Um, the weaponizing of women's bodies. Yes. And this is not new. So we, we can clearly say that we live, uh, let's just say high, high on a hill. Let me just drop that into people's spirit right now. We can live high on the hill in public. But if truth be told, we probably already know a story of somebody who either one may have been abducted mm -hmm. or yes. two, probably two more than one, has ha has known of a young lady, a girl, whether it's an auntie, a grandmother, a mother, a cousin, whose body has also been used as a weapon of war by being abducted, sexually assaulted, touched, felt up, broke, whatever, in the workplace, in spaces that we don't even want to name. Houses. I will name them. I'm going to say them. I'm going to do I it. Just, I just wasn't going to be. Go ahead. No, that's okay. I'll take it. Um, and, I, and I will, because this is one of the things, this is one of the reasons why this platform and your digital couch is so important. This is why wise and the, the work that, you know, women doing, um, doing service in the world Everywhere um, uh, is, 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 is so critical. The work of missions is critical is because we need to be the ones that are going to, to say what the world and other people will not say. So I'm going to say it, that there are there are people, women and girls in the church that are, are being uh, assaulted. These are uh, women who are being not only in the workplaces, but in the home that are being assaulted and, and, and abused. And they're remaining silent about it because they're afraid. Because, and, and it's, it is, and, and I will say, um, I, I, part of the reason why this is so important to me, and, and I, I'm gonna get personal if you don't mind. And I know that this is something that's going out into the world and I have um, talked about it 
Um, but I am a survivor of intimate violence. I am a, a rape survivor and a, a survivor of intimate partner violence. And so for me, this is not just what I'm talking about. This is real. And it's took him, taken me so long to be able to actually talk about it without breaking down into tears. And oftentimes I do, um, but what it gets me angry now. And it's a righteous indignation because we're not speaking up on behalf of those who are remaining silent. Because it is not to say that they don't have a voice. They absolutely do. But they have been too afraid to use it because they have been shamed, right. they have been mocked, right. and they have been uh, they have been laughed at, and they have been silenced, right? right? And so it's particularly women in the church. We need to listen to the stories of these girls. We need to wonder, why don't they want to come to Sunday school anymore? You think? Uh, let's ask what's going on. Why is it that they, you know, for those of us in traditions where you have acolytes or, you know, you have assistants that come and you have, you know, and they don't want to do it anymore. This is happening and it's happening not just by the men. It's, it's happening by those that are in positions of power within our churches. And so if somebody, I, I'll be the one to say it, but because we have to, and we're not talking about it, we need to create safe spaces. Um, within our sanctuary spaces, within our places of worship, within the places where, you know, people want to start having Bible study at home. And people, you, we got to be careful about who you're letting in your homes. We have to be careful about who you're letting in, in, in these intimate spaces, right? We have to talk about these things and we're not. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and we're in a pandemic now. And if we are talking about going back into the churches the same way, that's a problem. There's a problem. We have to talk about how we use language differently um, within our in, within the songs that we sing, within the prayers that we pray. We don't allow women and girls to feel safe. Not uh, j- and women and girls and the vulnerable, right? Because they're little boys that need to be feeling that need to feel safe. They're of they're men that need to be feeling safe. My role, though, is an advocate for gender justice and women and girls, and so that's why I amplify it. But I do not ignore the fact that there are also men and boys that are being uh, abused. And we also need everybody um, uh, to be a part of this. Because if we're going to be, if we're going to get free, we're going to need everybody in here. If we're going to end rape and violence in our world, we need everybody on board to do it. And so I think that uh, uh, Wise, I think that um, like Carrie, I think that women everywhere need to get on board and tell the truth about what's going on and not uh and not and not lie and as 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 the old mothers would say tell the truth and shame the death so i was trying to hold that back i'm sorry you know it's a reflex because you're raising the black church you gotta say it just pops I'm into a <laughs> i was trying to be dignified but sometimes I, listen we don't but pass being dignified here yeah, yeah and it's also <laughs> I want to also say too. So for me, I am a, a womanist preacher, and so I, I know, uh, and I know that that Wait, that word that word is not. Say, did you just say womanist? Absolutely, absolutely. Me, do I hear bell, do I hear bell hooks? Uh, you do. You absolutely do. You hear Alice Walker. You hear yes, you do. You hear oh, it all. Lord. all you had you had all the and so we got to remember i i came out i my i went to seminary where the mothers of womanist religious thought started we're talking about you know Dolores Williams Katie Geneva Cat Cannon Jacqueline Grant these are the women who taught us Right. Um, and of course, and the language and the title, of course, womanist has come from Alice Walker's definition. Right. So you see the activists, the poets, you know, the writers, the, the, the those are the ones who had cultivated and crafted that. And we and because there was no space for black women's black women's reality to be seen in the church. We needed to be able to say, wait a minute now. How is it that I how, how do I show up in the world? Right. right. Of course, you, you, you have black feminists, but the womanist way says that the whole folk, we, we, we're, we're, we're concerned about the whole folk. Right. And we we all go into Canada. All of us go tea right now. Sorry, I need to. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. So for me, that is the lens in which I do all of my work. Right. So that what we're talking about the whole folk how are the whole folk going to be safe how are we going to be free how uh, is our mind going to be emancipated moved from this kind of uh 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 boxed way of thinking and being how are we going to do missions differently because we ain't we can't do it the same way that we've been doing it and again 
for me, my I, I, I have moved from a model. I, I need I need the church everybody. to change the models. Huh? <laughs> Somebody say everybody. Yes, everybody. Everybody. <laughs> everybody. Y'all know this is church up in here on on a Thursday night. Call us a Thursday night revival on the digital. Thursday night night. Revival. <laughs> yes, I say yes, yes, yes. And amen. Yeah, because we have to. We have to. And I think that's one of the one of the ways in which we show up in the world. And that's the beauty of who we are as black women, uh, women of color and black women of faith in particular. Right. That's how we show up in the world. And I don't I, I can't, um, you know, title someone a womanist or not. I own that for myself. Right. But I think people I'm saying that's beautiful. the lens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's the lens beautiful. through which for me. My service um, um, in the church and in the world comes. Uh, yeah, so this is how, uh, so I am fir firmly planted in one of those things. I mean, uh, Reverend Dr. K Katie Geneva Cannon, bless her heart and rest her soul. She is now an ancestor, but she continues to speak to us and she continues to move with us. And one of the things that she has always said to us is that you need to do the work that your soul must have. That is what she says. Do the work that your soul must have. And for me, my soul has to see that women and girls are free and that we are safe and that we are free. And that work takes the form in which we do the, the forms in which we talked about, you know, sort of my service there, but from in, in, in the UN, in the global spaces, but also in the local church and right. into in the local communities, because we must keep those things connected. We have to. Otherwise, we ain't going to be free. Right. <laughs> now let's bring this home to what's happening in the next couple of days. So it's like, it, I, I'm, I really, I want to take this into the next hour. Those of y'all who want to chill with us, you can chill with us. You can, you can lay back in the cut with us. We're going to continue this conversation because it's almost quote unquote time to wrap up, but we still going to be here. So y'all can continue to hang out with us. I want to take this conversation to what's happening in the next couple of days. So the next couple of days, we don't see you again. You're yes. going to be on so grateful. a different Zoom call, <laughs> a different Zoom call, but you have been identified. Now, wait, let's wrap back a couple of days. Your work, your activism, your advocacy, your accomplishments and accomplishments. Ness, I just made that up. If that's not a word, it's, it's going okay. to be a word today. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> has got you into a an amazing space. Yes. So an amazing space. Tell You can speak to that space better than I can. Who are you now? What is your additional title? You are a part of the... Oh, you're talking about the, the induction. Yes. Oh, yes. I thought you were talking about lack hair. I was like, listen, I'm about to be that 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 finish with lack hair. We're gonna that's gonna be the big shh, right? But what's happening down south? Down south. I now I know I know what you mean. Uh, yes, 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 yes. So so what what we're talking about there is the the uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Um uh, uh the, the Morehouse College, Martin Luther King Jr. Bo uh, a board of preachers. Right, and so right wait, pause right there. Everyone, snap it up. You are kind. You are kind. You are kind. I will tell you that that thing blew my whole mind <laughs> when um when I got the call. Um, only because I mean these when you talk about the 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 kinds of scholars and um, um, activists um, that have been inducted into um, into this. Uh, into, it is just, and I want to, I want to make sure that you know it. So it's the board of preachers, sponsors, and the um, collegian of scholars, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it is amazing, <laughs> amazing to be um, the twenty, uh, one of the twenty twenty one inductees mm -hmm. um, to that. Um, and so the um, the service was just uh, um, just last week. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to have been there um, last year. Um, uh, um, and so I'm just grateful for Dean Carter and, um, um, and Reverend and Reverend soon to be Dr. Quincy Reinhardt there, um, uh, at the Morehouse college, um, 
chapel, the King Chapel, and and they extending. The, when I got the phone call to say that you've been nominated and um, congratulations, you we've we we have uh, accepted you and you're a part of you're going to be one of the inductees. I'm saying I'm sorry, who, <laughs> like who, what, they and weren't. so. Yeah, and so what, um, because uh, again, um, the work, uh, the interfaith uh, work that we, we have done, that, that they have recognized what you're doing and preaching in um, both local and global communities, um, again, to, um, to bridge the gap um, there, as you, you know, to be recognized on that level is a gift, an amazing, amazing gift. And so, um, uh, the in short, the Martin Luther King um, College of Ministers and Laity there, um, this year, their title, which was really amazing, The Origins of a Discontent. It was a non-violence, moral, um, um, cosmopolitan perspective. And so it's it's Gandhi, it's MLK, you know, it's Benjamin e. Mays, it's all of those, those who are together. And one day it's going to be a woman up in there, I'm just saying. But to be able, <laughs> that's, but but it is Morehouse College. So just say, we got to, we got to recognize. Um, but what it, what, what the gift about that is, is that they are recognizing women and women's leadership um, and women's voices as preachers and as scholars. Um, and that was a gift to be able um, uh, to, to, you know, to be, uh, to be inducted. So thank you for, for even re remembering that and recognizing it's such a gift really, really is. Thank oh, you. Oh, of course. So actually when I, again, I got the call like, okay, so you're going to interview this person. And then there was a post underneath the picture in my, inbox of this, I guess it's the pro, the flyer or the program or what have you. I looked and I said, MLK Board of Preachers. Let me find out how many women in this. Like, why is this a big deal? And I'm, you right. call me womanist. I was like, let me just see how many past five might she be, if, if any. And I said, oh, okay, wait a minute. There's a couple there. Shout out. All right. Thank you very much for recognizing that we have a voice and our yeah. voice be heard. Yeah. And so this is the 35th annual. This was the 35th annual. And it it has not been uh, for a while now. Uh, now, so just the last couple of years where mm -hmm. women's voices have been really recognized. And this year um, we had a phenomenal preacher who was also a union al alum, alumna and uh, Reverend Dr. Lakeisha Waldron, who is the president of um, of um um and uh of a new york a theological and, uh NYTS, yes yes NYTS. Mm -hmm. right isn't she the first she is the first she is president? the first yes she is. she is yeah just i mean and so we should we were talking uh, about it in in another circle we were talking about being the first right so i'm the first woman of African descent, first black woman ever to hold the position of, as chaplain there at the church center there. And so when we talk about being um, the first and whatnot, for, it was a big deal for, yes. for, for Lakeisha, for Dr. Waldron to be able to be there. And not only was she inducted this year, but now um, she has a portrait that is going to hang there in the, in the, in the college. And so just a gift just a gift to be one of the inductees for this year. So thank you again for that recognition and to God be all glory. Excellent, excellent. So now let's bring it all home, let's bring it all home. So next week, now, now we can, after we got all those <laughs> accolades, all those letters behind our name as our grandparents would say, all those letters behind your name, can you, but can you wash the dishes? Can, right. you, can you sweep the right. floor? Right. right. So right. what, will you, what will you be bringing home? What will you be bringing home to the spring conference with Lot Carey? So, so Lot, I don't. I'm not going to give everything away because I'm going to be there. But, um, Wait, but the, the spring you've missions. Already us, you've already given us a foretaste. You, you've already given us a foretaste. So we're going to be there. We're going to be there front and center with our tea, with our popcorn, and with our notebook. Go ahead. Let's. I'm waiting. Um, I because uh, again, one of the things, um. Uh, for the theme is just so rich, right? Um, that we have, um, you know, s serving the least of these, right? Um, and 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 the notion too for the morning for 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 the morning, I, I think, um, is uh, is focusing on um, the uh, the incarcerated 
And so what I think is so important, um, particularly uh, the theme that, that they've chosen, setting the captive free, ministering to the incarcerated. For me, um, and the, the overall theme, of course, as you know, is caring for the least of these, but um, it reminded me of Wise's, um, the prayer journal that we had, right? And um, that, yeah. And We're so- We're all in alignment. We're all in alignment. Absolutely. And so it just, it just took me back to that because what we're talking about is women and girls, of course, the un uh, being not only unjustly detained around the world, but the numbers of detainees and um, those who are incarcerated um, growing sky high worldwide. And so I'm, I'm, I am asking the question in, in this kind of a world, right? Is freedom even possible? I mean, is, is, is it possible that we can actually set captives free when people, uh, when we have systems uh, um, that are trying to kill us and, and nobody's trying to change that system. Right. Nobody's trying to change it. Now, when I say nobody's trying to change it, we are, but you know, by trying to do what we, and we, and uh, listen, the house that Stacey Abrams built <laughs> is trying to, to, oh, to, yeah. to to change the game, right? And we've done it. But you also see now what is being, what's trying to to uh, to change that, and to take us back before Jim Crow, right? I mean, what? So what I'm saying is, this is the system is doing exactly what it's meant to do. Mm -hmm. And so if we are saying that we have been called to set captives free, how how is it that we can do that? And I think it's really very simple. And I think um, um, there's something that I believe that the Lord is saying for us that we've got to we got to do. Um, and it's and I think, again, just like the just like the, the Thursdays in Black initiative, simple but powerful enough. And if we we can do it um, and we have to do it together. I think that's um, uh, that's, a, a, of course, um, the difference, because people can be doing things. You doing one thing here, you doing another thing here, another person's doing another thing. But unless we do it together, that we, we're not going to be, be able to make the impact. My um, former pastor, who has now be become a, a very good friend of mine, call him a, a big brother, um, Reverend Dr. Ivan Sean Pitts. And he used to say to us all the time, it doesn't matter. You know, we're better together. It's what We always used to say that. Always. We're better together. But one, <laughs> what he used to say to us, even that, even if you only got two teeth in your mouth, it's better when it's together. Right? And so I have echoed that since, uh, you know, it's true. It's, uh -huh. So again, everything that we do is better when we do it together. And so sisters working together, wise working together, um, we can end the violence in our lifetime. We can bring our girls back. We, we, can, we can do the work of missions, changing the, the landscape of it, moving from, and, and you'll hear me say this again next week, right. moving from models of charity to models of justice. That's why we got to do missions differently. And I think once we are able to do that together, <laughs> then I think we're going to be able to meet the needs of the world. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, you're bringing me back to something that I probably have never shared. <laughs> Somebody asked. How can I say this? Somebody asked me. Even somebody asked me to, to, let's say, you know, how we were in when you raise in the black church. If somebody asks you to do something, you do it, right? And so I'm sitting here like I can't speak on that. What? And I, if I dig a little bit, I'll find the paper that I wrote this on, and it was talking about missions and doing mission work. Um, and I said, well, and I come from the church that on, you know, we on fifth Sunday. All of our missionaries, we wear white. Yes. And I thought to myself, I said, some of the real mission work, you can't wear white for. <laughs> right about what you it. need you write about is it. overalls and some Timberlands. Right. <laughs> That's right. That's absolutely right. You need some overalls and you need some Timberlands because, and I actually, I, I have to say, I do not own a pair of Timberlands, but <laughs> some of the work, yeah, you wear white and you come, people see you from miles away and they could say, ooh, ooh what's that? Mm -hmm. But you put on the attire of those who you are trying to come alongside of. 
-hmm. And you do what? You actually blend into the crowd and you speak the language of the people that you're trying to support. And they are more welcoming and, you know, embracing of you. And they are willing to do what? To listen. Okay, somebody said you love your templates. You got templates? Okay, that's okay. Right. So <laughs> I love know, it. I used to have some brown. Yeah. Excuse me, because we because we from Brooklyn. I just have to say it. What a city love. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm supposed to be professional. But again, we're on the couch. We're on the couch, okay? We're on the couch. Listen, um, I think we've got to we've got to have the balance. And that's the thing. I mean, I, I, one of the things for me, so I have to you I am a a, a good West Indian woman. I I'm a Caribbean boy, you know, we that okay, so I'm not from Trinidad. Barbados in the house. Thank you. Lovely. By the way, we've been praying. We lifted up Barbados and um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines yeah. today because of the, the, the floods and the um, and, and all that is happening there. So we just want to make sure that we continue to pray for them. But uh, I, there is a place, what we can never do, we can never discount or dis, dis, um, disregard uh, the generations, right? We need yes, our okay. elders. We need, because we need to learn from them. We need to sit at the feet of the elders. We need to be able to hear from them. That that great cloud of witnesses that we talk about in the Bible is not just in the Bible here, but we have our elders and our ancestors that are informing the ways, right? We must, because we're not, if we don't, I mean, that is what Sankofa is. If we don't reach back, yeah. Um, and so so we're never going to be able to have a clear vision of where to um, where we're going. So we must honor uh, the, all of the generations. So there there's a place for your white. <laughs> no, no matter what, what. But but what you just pointed out is what I'm talking about, where we're changing the models. Right. So mm -hmm. you wear white because you want to have a special occasion and we're doing that. But when you're doing the work. You you know your your outfit the outer garb is going to look differently, yeah. And so and 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 Jesus is not moved because you were wearing your white and it was crystal clean. And Jesus is not moved because I'm just the <laughs> he's, he's, not I'm in, just, he's not in the creases. He's, he's not, not in, in the, the in the head. And and now and now listen. I I look I love a church hat. It, listen, so I'm not I am not. This is what I'm saying. This right. is a part of our culture, and it's really part of uh, of black culture, right? It's yes. a part of who we are uh, of, as as um, uh, particularly women of the African diaspora, and I think that that's what makes us beautiful. So we need to honor and celebrate all of that. All I am saying is that if we get too hooked on those kinds of traditional things, where it is what you're wearing that is uh, um, that is the biggest issue, then we we miss the point, right? But we don't take it away from people. Absolutely not. There is a place for us. Right? I'm gonna tell you, I'm at this, and I want to see my ushers in the white. Let me hear. Hear me? I want to see the ushers. I'm, an usher. I'm a former usher. <laughs> exactly. The corn is still. So, my corn. I'm saying, yeah. So I, I, I don't want to change that. I don't want to necessarily change. I just want to change the mindset. I want us to change the way that I was thinking. And I, I, I've always said this. I think that if we can lift the altitude of our thinking, our attitude will adjust. Yeah. If we lift the altitude of our thinking, our attitude will adjust. If we start thinking that we are we are we are more than what we wear. Right. <laughs> we are more than just some of the traditions that can that as we see in a pandemic don't mean so much when people are dying and they can't get together physically right. in the midst. I mean. I'm just saying that once we begin to think of ourselves as the as God's not just the church, but literally God's hands and feet in the earth, earth, that's when we're going to begin to do the when we're going to be able to see some things differently. That is when I'm saying that when our work um, doing missions will begin to actually con or actually not begin, but it will continue changing the lives because we've been changing lives. But I'm talking about now that we see the world has shifted and changed, right. we're going to have to do the same. And it's going to have to be a very radical and different way of doing it. Mm hmm. I am so excited. We have so many things happening in the comments. I want to uh, 
thank you so much for of course we're gonna have to read the comments after now of course yeah. you're gonna read the comments you're gonna reply to everybody because that is the protocol that we know to call here in the yeah. digital space right yes, so, <laughs> and it, thank you so much to uh dr clifton who has been our scope scribe tonight thank well, you so much i know oh my gosh every couple of minutes wonderful so even if you catch this on the replay here's how you can continue to move the needle forward I say this, I say this, I say this. Whatever touches your spirit, a word, a phrase, a sentence, you can take notes on your post-it, you could take notes in your journal, you could take notes in your Bible. We didn't even like mention any scripture verses, which is okay, because we've spoken the word through our own interpretation. Leave the message in the chat. Here's why. Because people swipe and swipe and scroll and scroll. When they see a multiplicity of comments, guess what? They're going to say, what's going on here? And they're going to see the two faces or the face. They're going to tap for a moment but they're going to read the comments to see what did they miss. Mm -hmm. Anything that you hear and you type, that you saw and you typed, leaves a trail. It leaves part of the story that is being told. My digital couch was initially called the power of story because I believe that every single person's story is meant to be told and shared. Even the, the good, the good and the best, right? The good and the ugly, mm -hmm. because it's going to empower someone else. My pastor, shout out to my pastor, the Reverend Dr. James Arthur Thornton of the Salem Missionary Baptist Church in Brooklyn, New York, <laughs> <laughs> who I know is watching. Um, he would say, you can learn what to do, not just by doing something else that someone else is doing, but you can learn what to do by looking at someone who's doing the wrong thing. I'm paraphrasing, right. but Absolutely. Absolutely. So if people want to know what's happening at Lot Carey, what's mm -hmm. happening on this digital couch, what's happening in missions, they need to come over into this house. Sure. Absolutely. If we want to know, are we supporting Chibok? Yes, we are. Mm -hmm. Are we standing for women and gender based? Violence? Yes, we are. Do we have a voice with incarcerated women and girls? Yes, we do. Do we help the people who need water? Yes, we do. Did we support Flint? Do we still support Flint? Yes, we do. Do we support the families? God bless the family of, of the young boy Dante from the other day. The George yeah. Yes, we do. We do. So we care for the people in our local community, our national community, and our international community. Do we show up and show out wherever we go, whether it be on Sunday, on Saturday at the grocery store, on Thursday at the, at, you know, at the farmer's market, whatever? Yes, we do. And we want other people to know that and to know that there is a great cloud of witnesses right here on the ground, being led in our local churches, in our community organizations, in the Lot Carey Baptist Farm Mission Convention. Um, you're leading the helm um, as chaplain of, for the, excuse me, let me get it right. Chaplain for the church center or of the church center for the UN. There we go, let me get it right. Yes, um, yes, yes. Right, under many forms of leadership. And so we want to thank you a thousand times, thank you. And this is just the foretaste. Sure. The foretaste of glory divine, because we're going to see you right back on this a similar platform next week at the spring conference. Um, any other people? Let me see if there's any. There's like a thousand comments in here. Uh, I wanna, can I just say, and you mentioned you mentioned the scriptures, right? We didn't go to scriptures, right? Because we live it out. But I want to say that Micah 6 and 8 is one of the scriptures. Did you just see that? Somebody? No, I, I'm not looking at the. I'm not looking at the the chat. I'm oh, looking at you. So, 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 wonderful, because that's. I mean, that's for that is that is what we are called right to do. And we think about it. You know, of course, the in my in Matthew twenty eight, 
the great commission to go ye therefore into the world, right? Baptizing and making disciples. We we know this. We know that's a part of it. But but the Micah six and eight mandate is to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. And if you do that, all the other stuff is going to fall in we line, did. right? And the other the other scripture for me, I would like for people to really get. Uh, um, I know that. We have been encouraged as women oftentimes to be the Proverbs 31 woman and all of this wonderful, beautiful things. And we should have a whole on a couch about that. But but I, I always go, I always push back on that um, just a bit because for me, I think that not only our women, but all of us, if we, particularly women and the young girls, we need to become Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 women. Right. If we can do that, if we can trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto our own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge God and God will direct our path. And so I'm, I, I say that to say because you brought up the, the scriptures and I know for us, we, we need to be grounded with that, but we need to walk out our faith. And those things are our mandates. Yeah. So we trust in God with all we have, and we are living out the mandate, not only just to go, because you can go therefore and be doing craziness. I'm not trying to just send you out. I need, we need that. Some people were called and then some people just went. And I, and I'm, I'm just, we're not, we're not trying for that, but we do want people, you know, to, to, to do justice. It's not just us saying that it's to do justice. Love mercy and to work humbly with our God. If we do that, then the work of missions comes naturally. It yeah. just flows out of who we are. Yeah. Okay. So our, our one of our last moments. So when I was about to say, oh, my, and then you said scripture. Okay. My, because thank you very much, my scope scribe. Dr. Clifton, who typed in. She, yes, yes. yes. It all, and then we started talking about it. So, and then Phenomenal. also. Uh, the, wrote, um, the other women. So Deborah, JL. Absolutely. Jael, yeah. Yeah. Lydia, Dork, Dorcas, and yes. Mary. Absolutely. I mean, all, all, yes, yes, yes. And I want to say that we, you, you know, we, we um, discount the Rahabs of, of the time, but we need to discount and, and the Tamars and because their stories, but everybody has a story. As you right. said, we started and there, there are some things that some of those women do. So I'm just saying, you know, to be able to add the Hagar's and the Tamar's um, uh, along with those other women that we have there. Because, no, you know, we don't talk enough about the Giles and the Debras. Uh, yeah. But um, I, 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 yes, 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 yes. 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 <laughs> Oh my goodness. This has been, this has been so full. Now I'm not going to be able to get to sleep for a couple of hours because I have to process all this. <laughs> this has been um, great. And thank you so much for this opportunity um, to be able to talk a little bit more in depth to get to not know, not only know you, but to really be able to, um, to connect with, um, with wise. And I, I feel like I, I we have uh, expanded the sisterhood. And the thing about it is and the, the brotherhood, because there's some absolutely. there's some really good men who are watching. I'm actually absolutely, absolutely, a number of my minister friends who from all across the country who are on people, some brothers who are actually asking to join the lot. Carrie Weiss, come on, come on through. We, we, we need everybody. We don't need to just be hanging. So we need. You, I don't need you to be. Let's, I don't need you to be a warrior. No hanging. We just we, we where we are going together. We are going together. And so for me, you one of my favorite stories in the in the in the whole book is the daughters of Zelophehad because remember they went and they went together. Okay. I was I have, I have a I preached a sermon about that and they did and they did they and they went together. They didn't they 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 and they they modeled for us. The, the different ways in which we can we can move. Anyway, that's a whole nother story. But I'm just saying that. So we've got to come. We've got to come together. And so we. So so sh to. I'm saying that to say thank you to the brothers. I have uh, had some wonderful, wonderful um, big brothers in the ministry. My pastors, my big brother pastor. I call him all the time, the Reverend Dr. Anthony L. Bennett. I love him the life and um and his his wife uh um and who is for us. I, I don't do the first lady thing. She is the she is our leading lady, but she is she is just 
a dear sister beloved, um, Dr. Uh, um, so Donna Thompson Bennett, but she she is just a gift. So that kind of partnership and that kind of partnership and leadership where we're seeing men and women um, and our siblings working together is the model that we need to, to, to have for mission work. Yeah. Excellent. So as we, if all hearts and minds, and are, minds clear, are clear, <laughs> okay, because we we raised in a black church. Okay. Absolutely. Listen, and we have to say this: as we leave this place, but never from God's presence. <laughs> you're so you're the vice minister. You can say that. I'm slowly. I sit in the seats. <laughs> Amen. I say. Amen. I say. Bless you so all. It is. Thank you so much for staying with us during the second episode of the Lot Carry Wise Digital Couch. So now, if you haven't followed us before, I pray that you will follow us now and let other people know. I even have some of my Connecticut peeps who have shared this out. So it will be all in the Connecticut. You know who I'm talking about. Yes, Reverend I do, sis. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so we've shared this out. Thank you so much once again, really, for for sharing, for being transparent and a thousand percent serious note for feeling that this digital couch is a safe space for you to be vulnerable enough to share something that not but what people are speaking out about a little bit more now. And I have to say, and I told my students this earlier today, yes, yesterday and today, I said, if you are in an uncomfortable space, if someone is saying something, showing something or doing something that makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable, you have the power to say, I am uncomfortable. No matter who it is. And if someone comes up with a story that in your first mind you think, what? If the person is going through something and has shared something that they've entrusted you to hear, believe them. Because people could come up with a weird story, but because we're adults and we're older and we know that the next step could be exposure, could be um, possibly a crime situation. Even if that young or younger person or older person, because now older people are coming out and like opening their closet. Believe them. Believe them. Yeah. Uh, um. And as we close, I mean, as we close out, and I know we're going. I, as you as you mentioned that, and I um, you don't. I I'm not. I don't feel comfortable enough to um to share my the personal parts of my own story um, just because, and I, and I, um, I, it's really troubling when people share their story um, with an alternative motive. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I, I'm not interested. I, 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 what I am interested in is that, you know, Jesus modeled for us vulnerability. I think Jesus modeled for us vul the, the best way to be vulnerable when he showed Thomas the scars and the wounds mm -hmm. in his hand. And 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 in Jesus showing those scars, um, he came. Thomas came to believe. I think Thomas gets a bad rap. I think that he he um, he was grieving. I think that he was grieving. Um, I don't know that. I mean, of course, and once we once 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 grief has taken us, yeah, we start to question our faith. We start to question a whole lot of things. And so I think that Thomas gets a bad rap for being doubting Thomas. I think that he was just overwhelmed with grief. But I think what Jesus modeled in that is how we are to be vulnerable. And the reason we are vulnerable is because then somebody else comes to believe. Mm -hmm. And that is the whole point of it. So that if I can share my story, that you can come to believe and know that this is a real thing, that mm -hmm. women and girls are dying uh, because uh, their bodies are being tools and weapons of war and we are being raped and we have to be silenced because we won't be, be, won't be believed or we're shamed. If, if you can come to believe that that's real, then you could be able to work towards the end of it. And that's my whole point of sharing. And so I think that in following Jesus's model, for me, that's the reason why I am comfortable. And thank you for creating safe space um, and, and, and strong, courageous space 
for people like myself who have um, survived but are daily overcoming. There's a difference. We are daily overcoming because it is a hard thing, um, but we can and we can do it together. And so I'm just grateful. And so I say thank you again. To all of our listening audience, once again, this is Doriel Anis Larrier. This is the Lot Carry Wise Digital Couch. This is episode two. We are grateful. We are blessed. We are honored. We are humbled to have been able to have sh- sh- excuse me shared this story. This amazing woman of God who is blowing up. I'm sorry, I had to get out my moment right now. And uh, and. She's showing up and she's showing out for God. And she's showing out as a missionary who is coming alongside people who need a word, a shoulder, an advocate, an ally, an accomplice. Yes. Skin in the game, not just on local, national, and international territories, but at the UN. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Peace and blessings. We will see you. Please keep your notifications on. Again, share this with other people. And we'll see you on the next episode of The Lot Carry Wise Digital Couch. Good night. Good night. <laughs>